Oh, there it goes. Listen to that. That sounds ridiculous. <laughs> That's so stupid. Well, I'm going to try something a little bit different today. I'm going to go super ricer on everyone and attempt to tune in a ghost cam tune for Buster. I have no clue if I'll be able to accomplish this. There are a few videos about EcoBoost chopping, but nothing crazy. And there certainly isn't anything on how to do it. So I'm gonna take it upon myself and see if I can figure it out. I don't know if I can, but I'd be damned if I won't try. So I'm gonna come on over here to Buster and hop on in and start flashing these tunes. Now real quick before I start flashing the tune, let me go over um, the two different methods that I'm trying and uh, explain the settings that I've changed and how I expect them to work. So here is the first method I'm going to try. So here's the first method I'm gonna try to see if I can achieve the results that I want. And this method is um, something I've kind of experimented with in the past, but not really had great, um, you know, outcome. It just was very sloppy and I didn't like it. So uh, basically all I'm doing is adjusting the, or manipulating rather, the um, spark advance to kind of like jump around a little bit and cause a fluctuation in RPM. So a couple of the settings I've changed here is these feedback settings. It goes from 700 to 600. I really probably could tighten that up, but I'm gonna just try it off there and see what happens. The main thing is if I go over to my spark tables and I come down to map point zero, this is the mapped point that the car idles in spends a lot of time and idles and, and a lot of its wide open throttle time is spent at this map point. But if we take a look over here, the car idles around a 0.33 load and I have a target RPM of 700, which is right between my two cells here of 600 and 800. In 600, I have negative 15 degrees and then 800, I have positive 15 degrees. All right, so you see how I'm gonna do that. So with that said, I'm gonna go ahead and get this flashed over. All right, so we're all finished here. So I have absolutely no clue what to expect. So I'm gonna go ahead and run a log here so I can monitor if the car is doing what I want it to do. Do that and let's go ahead and switch it on. So as of now, the idle is smooth. I'm not sure if it will do what I need it to do unless it gets up to a certain temperature, coolant temperature. So I might have to let the car warm up or at least get through, let it get through the warm up process to see if it actually will do anything. A few minutes later. Oh no, this is definitely not going to work. So yeah, that doesn't seem to be doing it. All right, give me a second. I'm going to make a couple adjustments here and see if that helps. Okay, so I made some changes here. I think I may have had a couple things backwards, honestly. So we'll we'll see if that makes any difference. I don't know. Okay, so this method is starting to work. If you notice, my timing advance is starting to fluctuate pretty rapidly. It's just not fluctuating enough and it's smoothing itself out with a couple spikes. So uh, I realized that I had the borderline spark backwards. Oh, there it goes. Hear it? It started to do it. It does it and it corrects itself. I think I need to put a limit there. So it goes above 800 RPM, which then it starts entering into a different cell, unless I adjust that cell further up. Then it goes negative 15 degrees. And then when it gets to about 600 RPM, it adds about 15 degrees. So then it's this fluctuation. Ooh, the mail. They should have delivered something I ordered for the next video that you may see. Sure, you'll see that one after this one, pretty sure. Okay, so I'm on the right track. I just noticed that it's not going down to 600. It's mainly staying around the one cell. So let's go back to our spark advance. Let's go to our borderline, map point zero. Yeah, so it's staying around here, but then it wants to actually go up. It corrects upwards 
closer to a thousand. I guess I also need to make this negative 15 there. I want it to go down to 600 because it's supposed to be around 700 anyway. That's its target idle speed. So let me go ahead and flash this to Buster and we'll see what happens. All right, so I got those changes made. So it's gotta give it a second to come out of its startup modes. <laughs> oh, it was starting to do it pretty good. <laughs> I have to tap the throttle to get it the RPMs to go up. Okay, so I'm getting closer. I'm getting closer. So I think I need to set the target idle in that range of 800 or so, between 8 and 900. It seems to be where it's idling when it does that, but when it falls beneath that, then it goes back to the smooth idle. So then I need to raise my idle, park neutral, 800, drive, 800. Okay, so let's see what that does. Hopefully this will be the final revision here for the most part, just to be able to achieve uh, the results. Let's go ahead and flash buster one last time, hopefully. Here we go, let's see. We got it figured out. <laughs> Hear it? Oh, I wonder how it sounds with the exhaust valves open. Oh no, it's correcting itself. And then it comes back up into its range. See, I have to tap the throttle to keep going again because after a while, there are timers that it will try to go back and um, adjust the idle. There, it's adaptive control. Yep, see, right here. These are timers. Idle control maximum time for closed loop control. Let's see if I, once I tap it, how long it takes. One Mississippi, two Mississippi, three Mississippi, four Mississippi, five, and then it starts correcting. Yep, that's it. So I'm gonna have to adjust that and just extend it a lot. <laughs> so I wonder what happens if you actually go and drive. Oh, that's a whole different story. Listen to that. Holy crap. So drive, it's perfect. Oh my God, so let me put it back in park. So yeah, I gotta adjust those timers. But let me put, let me set the GoPro up behind the car. I got the exhaust valves open. That, that sounds ridiculous. That's so, that's so stupid. Oh my God. And actually, surprisingly, the idle is pretty stable when it's doing it. The idle doesn't fluctuate any more really than it did stock. It just, you feel the vibrations of the engine. <laughs> That's so amusing. Oh, I'm so happy I actually was able to figure that out. Oh my goodness. That's amusing. Super rice mode activated. And looks like the rain activated, which sucks. I'm gonna to put the windows up and sweat my ass off. I already got sweat running down my back into my butt crack, which is why you need to give this video a thumbs up because I'm out here doing this stuff, getting sweat in my butt crack so you can enjoy. Okay, I think I pretty much have that figure it out. I understand what I'm gonna to need to do. I need to raise these adaptive idle timers so they do not get in the way and then it should idle like that in park. But if it's in drive, it will idle just the way I want it to. So, you know, I think I have success there. Now it's time that I try my second method, which is actually making the car force the valves to overlap for some chop. So. This method I also tried before and I never ever got it to work. Not one bit, unlike the last method that I, get, I did get it to work, just it wasn't that great. So uh, with that, let me go ahead and show you how this next method works and the settings that I changed that will hopefully achieve the right 
results. Let's go ahead and take a look at that. So now the next way that we can try to achieve a loopy idle is by trying to park the camshafts at a certain uh, angle at idle. So if you have the camshafts where they have a lot of overlap, well, generally that will create a bit of a, you know, loopy idle. So I'm not exactly sure the best way to do this uh, in terms of using or manipulating the software to do what I need it to do in the tune. So this is definitely going to be a trial and error. I can do it this way, manual control. If I enable this, I can set my intake angle and exhaust angle. And I have tried this before. It does work. It will park these cams at idle um, at a certain angle. And if you adjust it just right, then there's a bit of overlap. But it's like that all the time. And, well, you don't want that. You want variable cam control. So how can I get the car to have the loopy idle when it's idling and not have any drivability issues everywhere else? Well, I need to be able to set a mapped point for the cams where there's a lot of overlap. And well, by doing that, the best option is using optimum power. If we look here, optimum power, we go into the intake valve opening angle, and we can see that here at 1,250 RPM, which is going to be where the car will be, uh, well, it'll be under that, but that'll be what it uses. It references that number. So as you can see, it's negative 47 degrees. Now, this is crankshaft rotation, so it's not cam degrees. This is degrees of the crankshaft rotation. So negative 47 degrees, which really means that the intake valve will start opening at 673 degrees of crankshaft rotation, which is during the exhaust stroke. So then if we go over to the exhaust side of things, the exhaust valve will start closing, start closing at 17 degrees crankshaft angle, AKA during intake stroke. So that is a fair bit of overlap that I can adjust, but I'm just gonna go straight off those numbers because that's pretty good. That's a lot of overlap there. So how I hope to use these tables is, first of all, I have to go over here to map point configuration, stock, this is not even used. So I have to go and enable it, which I did. I made it a one, and then I come here to snap to point, and then also enabled map point optimum power to be able to do that, which once again is not enabled on the factory calibration. So then how do I activate it? Well, hopefully right here, enable percent load. 700 RPM desired load is 0 0.30. Um, so 30% load, which is where the car idles at, should enable the optimum power a camshaft map point, therefore it will start idling with that overlap. I'm hoping that's what happens. I've tried this in the past and haven't had luck, but I think this might be the ticket. So that's the second way that I'm gonna try right now. All right, so you had a peek at that, and well, we're gonna go ahead and load that one up and see if that works. This is a bit more tricky. It's a little bit more involved in terms of understanding how this system works to achieve that result. I was pretty confident adjusting the timing advance in the uh, cells for idle would work, and it did. However, forcing cams to go in a position that they're not made to go in is a bit tricky because there's a lot of things you have to play with in order to get it to do it. And I'm not a tuning expert. So if I can figure this out, man, would I be happy. So we're getting there, it's almost done loading. Be starting the car up here soon and see what happens. Yeah, so this isn't really working out the way I thought. It's only, as you can see, it's stuck in optimal stability for the cam scheduling when I want it to be optimum power. So uh, there's gonna be some settings I can try to change and see if it makes any difference. And see, what I don't understand is I changed the parameter for this. See how it's in emissions reduction? 
that you can enable that at a certain load. Well, it should be disabled right now. Yeah, here it is. When it comes to cam tuning, I have little understanding on how it works on these Ford vehicles. It is extremely complicated because it's not so much that I don't understand how it works in a sense, but the way it's implemented in the strategy for these EcoBoost cars is annoying how it all works. If it was things that could be triggered easily by certain settings, you know, by a certain RPM or something, like you can get an aftermarket ECUs, not a problem. Seeing an aftermarket ECU, it's a highly advanced OEM ECU, and that comes with its own set of problems, like this. As disappointing as that is, looks like I need a lot more uh, training with the tuning in order to figure that out. At least I got half of the equation figured out, but it's upsetting because if I was able to get the overlap to work out, I was curious to know how that sounded with the previous method of adjusting the timing advance and having them both together, how that would sound. So I can't end the video off like this. It's too depressing. Can't do it. So I'm gonna end the video off right. I'm gonna do it just this. And I'm going in for the win. And by doing that, we're gonna lock the cams in the overlap position. Maximum effort, maximum EcoBoost chop. Hit it. Oh, holy crap. That is true cam overlap chop. <laughs> Who says you can't can chop? They sure can. <laughs> that thing sounds gnarly. Look at the whole damn car shaking. <laughs> Man, that's great. Man, look at that. Look at that chop. Unfortunately, I can't run the car like this continuously because the cams are parked in one position and one position only, unfortunately. So if I was able to keep the cams parked in the right position at idle and have it do that transition to normal cam positions for driving, that'd be great, but I don't know how to do that. So if anyone knows how to do that, let me know in the comments, because I would love to give it a shot. Um, though, surprisingly, having the cam overlap seems to chop harder. It doesn't sound as loud of a chop, but it shakes the car more than doing that with the um, uh, timing advance adjustments, where it was more audible, it was more noticeable, but it didn't feel like it was. It was... Um, much smoother in the car and the rpms were smoother can't believe i actually heard buster chop i never thought i'd hear a four-cylinder mustang chop like that but here we are so it, <laughs> that's fun tuning is fun i love it this is great i'm glad i didn't pay someone else because how could i have all of this fun seriously oh my goodness with that said i definitely accomplished what i wanted to accomplish for the most part like 98 percent there for the video so uh otherwise yeah um just let me know what you think put your thoughts in the comments and of course if you like the video please give it a thumbs up share it with everyone you know if you want to see more content like this and you haven't already go ahead subscribe to the channel keep a look out for next cars creative video